You know, it's always fun when it's the before the interview. And <laughs> I decided I was going to go ahead and bring this on the damn air. <laughs> Not doing it just to rip her. <laughs> but just, I love these moments, man. I love these moments. So y'all know, um, I'll be trying to be nothing but, you know, super fun. And our next guest, uh, I'm not saying this to give her a grand interest, but I asked her, I said, can you take your glasses off so we can see your face? And she was like, I didn't know that was a prerequisite for the interview. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, no, it ain't a prerequisite. It's just, let's just be trying to allow for people to see y'all. Because you know what I'm saying? See, I know these people be sitting on live and everything. They'd be like, now why would you have on? She got the glasses on. We can't even see her face. You know, so I'll just be trying to think. When I have on, I, I don't be trying to add nothing extra to, to, to the interview. I just be trying to think and everything. And so, you know, I said, look, if you want to keep your glasses on, it's cool with me. You know what I'm saying? I just, I just ask for the people. So those of y'all that might be watching this later, and y'all like, she sat there the whole time with her glasses on. <laughs> now you got the story as to why she, she can, wanted to keep her glasses on. Can I explain on. something on why? Like, can I yes. explain on something on why I cover my eyes? Why? Well, you know, they say that your eyes is the one the windows to your soul, right? Okay. Well, do you want everybody peering into your soul, like, all the time, every day? Yeah, that's true. Now, I thought you could, I thought you had your glasses on because uh, our little solar power thing going on, there was a lot of light. Some people it's say, a lot of different reasons, <laughs> you know? Some people say, uh, say, look, can I please keep my glasses on? My cataracts is acting up. And I love R&B. You know, back in the day in the 90s in R&B, they always wore glasses. Then nobody know what their faces look like. I don't you know? know why. I don't know why. <laughs> so my head when you talk about that. This whole thing with the glasses thing got me laughing. I promise y'all we gonna say I don't know why I thought of like Joe to see a song. That's what I'm saying. Can't like Aaliyah, all of them, them back there. Like Aaliyah, Total. You know what I'm saying? It's like they, they never showed their face. They just, they sang and they, you know, that's what it's about. Yeah. It's about like the personality. Oh man, folks gonna go back and listen to this interview and say, "Damn, y'all was having a bunch of fun before the interview <laughs> even started." <laughs> With Brian Stinson and YTSKs, man, it's all about having fun, bringing fun vibes, man. CC Dior is here, man, in the building, man. Uh, with the people, man, that's some really dope music. Excited about sharing it in a matter of moments. Uh, so, break down to the people that's hearing you for the first time on Fusion. Um, what type of artist you are? Um. I'm, I'm just, I'm diverse, you know, um, I do everything, I'm also a songwriter, so I just go with the flow, I'm, I go with the vibe and how I feel, you know, like one day I might feel like I want to rap, but one day I might feel like I want to do a pop song, and then another day I might feel like I want to go deeper to alternative slash rock music, then another day I might be feeling like I want to do some country music. You know, or I might hit the island, the island vibes, Afro beats. So it just all depends on the vibe for me. So I'm a vibe artist, I guess. It's crazy because when she said hit the island, the first thing that popped in my head is take a drive down Stony. But <laughs> I, I, I get what you were trying to say, but that's what popped up in my head when I heard that, though. She said hit the island. I'm like, Ooh, oh, we, we, cause he had, he had some I got that type, too. I got the slider music, too. So, yeah, all of that. So right. it depends on how I feel. So how long have you actually been making music, though? Uh, I've been making music for at least, uh, like, about 10 years. Mm, 10 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, like, with you being in the game for at least 10 years, you feel me, and you going on strong, too, though. So, like, what's some advice that you get, you could give to somebody that's just now starting off? Um, I want to say go, like, come in the game with a, um, with an open mind, but definitely keep your guard up at all times. Um, I always go with your first mind. If you feel like it ain't right, it's not right. <laughs> it ain't right. It ain't right. <laughs> and uh, now don't always trust a smile because sometimes, like, it be, you know, people, are, they don't always show you love in the beginning. Like, you got to, it's always a honeymoon phase. It don't matter if it's a relationship, a uh, situationship, um, business. It don't matter. It's always a honeymoon phase in every phase of your life. So you got to understand, like, it's gonna always be good in the beginning. You gotta understand who people are when when things hit the fan. For sure, for sure. And for the people that's seeing you for the first time, that's hearing about you for the first time, let's just break down your name and stuff like that. So how did you end up eventually coming up with your stage name? Um, my um real name is 
not CC, but it's CC. I ain't gonna give my real name away, but it's CC. Um, Dior, I've had that name for like at least like over ten years. You know, I've always been into fashion. I always, I feel like my style is, um, as far as music is, is high fashion. <laughs> you know, so I always gave my name Dior, and a lot of people was having a problem with my name back years ago. I guess they wasn't up on fashion, but now everybody up on fashion, so now Dior is popular, you know. And a lot of people got the last name Dior now. It was only really like Christian Dior. That was really it, you know. But now, like you had catch Dior behind a lot of other people's names. But I was definitely one of the first few people who had Dior behind my name. So hearing that and hearing that you, you know, fashion systemable and all that stuff, like, is there a chance that down the line that you'll design something that, you know, people be rocking? Yeah, I actually already have um, something. It's called Damsel in Distress, and I distress, um, like, denim, and I hand paint denim and things like that. Um, this is not made by me. This is made by Q from High End Junkie. Shout out High End Junkie. She's super dope. Um, she's definitely inspired me and inspired a lot of other people from Chicago to, um, you know, chase their dreams and get into the fashion world and stuff like that. But, yeah, I already have a um, line. It's called Damsel in Distress, and it, it's super cool. It's on Instagram. Y'all should check it out. I'm, uh, I did jackets and stuff for, like, um, different celebrities. Like, it's a pop star. Her name Tove Lo. She took um, my jacket on tour. She went all the way to, like, NBC, performed on Jimmy Kimmel Live with it. I was like, <laughs> that was, it was so cool. Like, that was, like, a highlight of what, I, what I've been doing and stuff like that. And so that IG again is where? Where people can go support? Damsel in Distress. That's, that's good. Can you do me a favor? And I know it might sound like really like pet peevish, but can you spell that out? Because, you know, some people, you know. No, you're not wrong. Um, damsel, D-A-M-Z-E-L in Distress, like Distress, D-I-S-T-R-E-S-S dot co. And, um, that's, that's pretty much the Instagram. That's what's good, man. We're definitely excited about having you and everything. So musically and everything, I surprised you. I got some music from you right here on this show. <laughs> I'm going to bring y'all in on something. A lot of y'all that be listening to this show, whether it be live or whether it be on the radio, I feel like this is like a keep it real moment. Maybe it's because we ain't going to be here next week. Uh, we'll be uh, in the streets with our other station. Uh, that uh, Y'all be like, man, look. I be really wanting to send y'all some music, but I curse a lot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm like, what am I going to play? Then they going to be like, hey, 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 hey. Oh, it's so much bleeped out that it's like you don't even understand what's going on because it's so much bleeped out. You're like, I'm trying to keep up. <laughs> so, so I decided to surprise you because I felt like we couldn't do this interview without featuring some of your dope music. So I decided to bless the people with All of a Sudden. Oh. And so All of a Sudden, what's the inspiration behind All of a Sudden? <laughs> all of a Sudden, um, pretty much is about, um, it be people out here that be thinking that they can like rev you up or grind your gears and it's just like, girl, ain't nobody worried about you. You more so worried about me than I am about you. And you're not even important enough for me to worry about you. Like, you don't even cross my mind at all. I have a lot of other things on my mind, and you're definitely not one of them. Don't be mad because your man want me. So, yeah, that's basically what that's about. On that note, uh, it's Fusion Radio with Brian <laughs> Stitcher and uh, YTS Keys. Uh, CC Dior is here. I think she did all the explaining. All of a sudden, is in your ears now. <laughs> Stitched up like a scene. Black 
fun. Black magic, put it on me, think it now, he gotta have me obsessed. Uh. I know they wish I was pressed, but I'm more, and I know that they less. All of a sudden, I need to just think I'm pressed. I ain't never pressed, matter of fact, I'm such a threat. He just ice me up, playing tennis, this baguettes. You can't catch me slipping, I ain't living with regrets. All of a sudden, I need to just think I'm pressed. I ain't never pressed, matter of fact, I'm such a threat. He just ice me up, playing tennis, this baguettes. You can't catch me slipping, I ain't living with regrets. You can't catch me slipping, I ain't living with regrets. talking about man i ain't gonna lie y'all been bringing the vibes today the females been doing their thing from the first lady she came in you know she was a um uh arthur and stuff like that to dope she came in with some good vibe music for sure. too. Shout out, shout out both for them yeah i'm doing y'all thing man so i want to jump into the to the songwriter part though a little bit i want to jump into that so like how is that though like as far as like being a songwriter though in your opinion like what really made you get into that part because that's a whole nother feel right there well i always uh love music like i'm musically inclined and i play instruments um i actually was in a marching band um in college and stuff like that i play trumpet and um i play a little piano and a little guitar so i always just love music music is like a big part of my life so um i always love to write songs i always when i was a kid i always hum melodies you know i love melodies real bad like that's like my favorite thing in, in life <laughs> like i love melodies and stuff like that and i love to help people and i love to help myself so um i always just want to see people like do their best so if i can help i like to help others too you know and um it's a it's a release for me like writing is a release for me it's therapeutic so that's what i that's why i like to do it so like okay for example like me being an artist and stuff like that mainly rapping like i never had nobody write a song for me so like what's the process that you go through as far as like trying to write a song for a specific person or just writing a song in general though so, like a person like you, like you say, you never had a person write for you, so you write for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So, the type of person that I am, I want everybody to be themselves, and I like, I really like to hang out with a person. This is what I like to do. If I can, I like to hang out with you and get to know you just a little bit. So, when I write for you, it's customized to who you are, you know? So, if I was to say something in the song, you could relate because it's about you, you know? whether you're going through a breakup or you're going through like hard times or you living your best life or like anything like that, anything that I catch on that you have going on, I throw it in a song. That's what I like to do. And if you're good at what you do and you just need a little bit of like guidance, I still let you write your, your, your music, you know? I may just help you with the hook or I may say, hey, maybe you could say this and say that. I don't have to write a whole song out, you know? Songwriting doesn't have to be you writing a whole song out. It can be just a little bit of help. No, nah, I only asked that because I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, man, like, I write all my material because it's like everything I'm talking about, I only I would know. So to have somebody write a song for you, though, it's like that's a, that's a whole different beast right there, though. Like, because I'm thinking about it like this, like, okay. Okay, what if you write a whole song, though? Like, just on some, you just wrote a song. Like, could you go to somebody else? Like, yeah, I wrote this song. I necessarily don't want to do it. See if you could do it. Like, yeah, I was I've trying done to see that if it was a situation like that. I've been, I've been in the industry. I've worked with people from YSL. I work with people from Cash Money. Like, I've done these things already. It's not hard, you know. Um, people trust in me. And like I said, I already be around them. So it'd be like we're cool. Like, we almost, like, we, we, we be pretty much like friends, you know, like, I become cool with people and I get to know them and they get to know me. They they may open they may open up to me about certain things they may not even open up to with other people, you know? And I put it in the music and then I make the song for them and they can relate because it's about them and it's for them. You know, like I can make a song out of a conversation. Like just like how you talking to me and how y'all talking to me, I can make a song about this. This is your radio, Brian Stinson, YTS Keys, man, CC, Dior is in the building, man. Enjoying every bit of this conversation. And uh, I got to go back to that uh, all of a sudden. I didn't do my do my job. Uh, and what my job is, is 
When a song is like one minute and 50 seconds, you know, you get some people that be like, oh, he's going to play some music. I can run to the kitchen, get me a sandwich. <laughs> or something, or <laughs> uh, I did do my homework and, and, and let y'all know that, man, that 150 was finna go quick. <laughs> that 150 was finna go quick. You didn't went and got the sandwich. You're like, damn, they back talking again. <laughs> but however, uh, I said that to say that we hear a really dope song like that. Here on this show, we like to give people homework. Homework assignments. It's like back in the day when we went to class. And so uh, I want you to give our listeners and viewers a homework assignment. I want you to talk to us about some previous projects that you released that are really dope that you feel like people need to indulge in. Um, I would say uh, the first track that you all should go and check out um, is, is a throwback, but... Um, it's something that is cool. I think that y'all should go and check out um, a song called Flexing, which is featuring Speaker Knockers. It's not a lot of artists from Chicago who has a song with Speaker Knockers, and I did a song with him before he passed away. So um, I definitely think that y'all should go and check that out. Um, it's another song called Put That Ish On. <laughs> it's um it's definitely it's definitely heating the streets up right now like it's one of those songs that catch it catch people ear and if you don't like it the first time you definitely gonna like it the second time so um i definitely think that y'all should check that out um i think that's pretty much it for now so can i stop you and y'all finna laugh at me y'all say he didn't have a lot of keep it real moments <laughs> low key that song you just mentioned i really wanted to play that song i really did if I wasn't on this platform where everything had to be clean, let's keep it real, Mom. Keith didn't even know this. Yeah. Then I would play it. But I thought about it, and I thought about the editing, and I was just like, it's going to be too when much. It, when did it send you the clean edit? Nah. Didn't I, get the clean edit. Actually, I edited between me and you. I edited the last song that we played. Um, I thought I sent you the clean edit. Nah, sure. I didn't get it. Mm. I didn't get it. But it's all good. Because I told you I wasn't going to leave y'all here hanging. Yeah, that's definitely the single. Uh, it's, all, it's cool, though. I definitely thought I sent you the clean edit for sure. Yeah, yeah. So that's the homework for people to do. Definitely uh, check that out and everything. Uh want to talk about, man, family. What does family mean to your movement as far as your career? You know what I mean? Like, what what are they saying about the music that you, that you released? Do they got some dance challenges or something going on? Talk to me. Um... To be honest, um, family, they be cool, but I feel like sometimes it be the strangers that support you better than your family, you know? Mm. I love my family, but, you know, they going through what they going through. So I really, I just go with who, who, who rock with me, and, you know, whether it's a stranger or somebody on the street, somebody I met two days ago, that's cool, too. Um, they they rock with what I got going on, but I feel like it be a lot of, a lot of people be quiet, too. I, I feel like people mm. need to get a little louder on what I got going on because don't wait till I'm, like, taking off because y'all going to be the first ones to be like, oh, she Hollywood, oh, she forgot about us, oh, she left us in the trenches, and it's just like you left yourself in the trenches because you ain't, you, you didn't show the love you supposed to show. You know what's so crazy about that statement? I've, I've been peeping that too, though, but I never really understood that, though. Like, it be seeming like, other people outside of your circle got to stamp you for your circle to stamp you. Yeah. And that don't make sense to me at all. Though. I think it's a, I think it's like a lot of, we, we, we thought, we thought we knew who you were, you know, like we thought we knew who you were and you wasn't who you are now. So they're stuck on who you probably was when you was 12. <laughs> you know, and it's like, you may be like in your twenties or in your thirties or whatever the case may be. And they still think like you, Little John John from from the block. It's like I grew up. I ain't dusty no more. Like I've been, I ain't been dusty for ten years. You know, like people be stuck on like, you know, they might be stuck on who you probably was when you was about twelve. Like you was still like growing, and you know what I'm saying. You still blossoming. It's like they gotta understand. Like you gotta evolve. You know, it's all about evolution. Like evolution is real. You have to evolve. Like you can't stay the same, or you will become extinct. Okay, so just even on that whole thing of as far as like elevation and like being getting different and being better, we 
with you being like what you doing music so long i know you didn't transition in probably so many different ways as far as your music like mm -hmm. so like let's start off like from the beginning to like where you at now like what certain things that you see in, in yourself that's different from like when you first started making music to how you make music now when i first started making music i used to write on a notepad <laughs> you know it was like a journal that's how i used to do now i don't write at all i haven't been writing for like the last about eight years you know, I just freestyle. So every song that you hear be made straight off my head. Like, I don't I don't take no time. And I ain't trying to say that to say that on some, like, bragging type stuff. Cause some people are like, Ugh. but no, I don't take, I don't take, I just, I say what's on my mind, you know, and I'm making it to a song. It's, it's therapy for me. I'm not, I'm definitely on the 88.9 FM, WIIT, Chicago. Yeah, man, you know, we definitely got to take that little break. But back to my girl, CC, man. So, like, with the transitions, though, like, is it like, okay, was it a certain type of music you was making at the beginning or it was always, like, you was just so diverse and you yeah. was making different type of music? Um, I always um love all styles of music. But when I first started, I did start off with hip-hop and rap. You know, that was the first thing I started off with, being coming from urban communities, you know, growing up in the urban community, like, that's what I started off doing. But I always like other styles of music, and that's why I implemented the music that I listen to into the music that I do. So, like, it took time for me to do that because I wanted to get comfortable with just doing music in general, you know? And if you're going to do music, like, coming from where you come from, you want to get people to listen to it. You can't be like, you can't make no rock song. And then you in the urban community, you know, you like, and I fall for you, you know, and they're like, what? <laughs> they like, I don't know, <laughs> like, I don't know, but you know, you coming there, you talking about, you know, sliding on the block. I don't like the ops, you know, they like, ooh, you know, so yeah, it's like, so you gotta, you know, you gotta do, you gotta come, you gotta do it how you do it, you know, you gotta start, like, you gotta make it make sense, that's all. So like, I know sometimes, you feel me, it's hard to create, because at the end of the day, we all are artists and stuff like that, but we really create it in different type of ways, yeah. like if you really want to boil it down. So, like, what certain things that you do to be at your best, to, like, create at the best, you feel me? Like, you know, certain people need to smoke a blunt or certain mm -hmm. people need to be in a certain type of environment and stuff like that. So, like, what needs to be there for CC Dior to make the best music she can? A nail and a hookah. That's it. Mm -hmm. A nail it. and a hookah. <laughs> Real big hookah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't smoke. Like, I don't, like, I don't really, I don't, I don't smoke the other stuff. Uh, but, yeah, I do a hookah, and I, like, I take a couple shots. That's about it. That's all it takes for me to create. What do that do for y'all, though, like? Because I see people doing anything with the hookah, though, but, like, what do it do for y'all, <laughs> It boosts you, like, it's like, it, it gives you a boost, you know? It's like, it, it takes you from here to, like, here very quick, like, for real, for real, um, without you having to smoke, you know? Like, without you having to get, like, high, high. But it's still how you, with that feeling, though, because it gives you a whole lot of smoke. Like, you take in a lot of smoke. Oh, for sure, for sure. So, um, just before we get up out of it's one more question I want and stuff like that so i know you didn't probably been all different type of places did all different type of shows and stuff like that so like what's the ccdo experience like if i was to like if you wanted me to come out to one of your shows you wanted me to pay for a ticket what should i be expecting when i pay when i buy that ticket and i come see you perform um it'll be nothing like how you seeing me right now right now i'm chill you know but when i get on that stage it's like i'm a whole nother person um, I leave myself on the stage, you know, I leave my soul on the stage and I don't care if it's two people in the crowd, I'm gonna perform like it's 200,000 people in the crowd. I'm gonna give you that energy that you never thought I even could possess, you know, and you gonna, you not gonna wanna pay attention to nothing else but my show. That's like, it happens every time, so if you didn't know who I was before I stepped on that stage, you are gonna wanna know who I am when I step off of it. <laughs> hey, I, hey, I love that master, cause I don't think a lot of people think like that, like like how you said, for example, it don't matter if it's 200 people in versus 2,000, you still going to get in the yeah. same type of performance, yeah. you feel me? Like, a lot of people don't understand that because that goes into the, the 
the fact of creating your fan base and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. If you gave them a lousy show, why would they want to go look up exactly. your name and your YouTube and stuff like that? And then we got to think, too, we in a new day and age. The Internet is the Internet. The Internet take you everywhere. Like, the in somebody from Australia can be watching, you know? So even though it was two people in the crowd, it's still people from other places that can see it on the, on the phone, on the Internet, you know? So somebody could be recording you. So how you going to perform just because it's two people? How you going to get them a lousy show? When they, you don't know who that person was in the crowd. What if that was an A and R? What if that was an executive to a label? Mm -hmm. You know, so you got to be smart about how you do things. So that's 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 my advice I give to people. That's what I'm talking about, man. So just before we get up out of here and we wrap up this interview and stuff like that, you definitely got to get people on your social media so they can tune into your moves. For sure, um, y'all can follow me at CCDior. That is S I S I underscore Dior or S I S I D I O R. Um, I'm everywhere. You can Google me. You can follow me on um, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, uh, Twitter, X, whatever you want to call that. Um, don't follow me on Facebook. Um, but yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's it. That's all. And shout out Jerk, man. Jerk, Jerk's World, um, J E R K World. That's my manager. You know, she always be there holding me down. Oh yeah, man. Just, yeah, that's 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 the last question. Just before we get up out of here, we can't let you not speak on Jerk. You feel me? Explain what she means to you and stuff like that, and what she means to your moves. Um, Jerk means a lot to me. Um, she keeps me motivated. Like she has that extra. She added that extra energy to me that I really needed. Um, she don't let me slack at all. You know, she be on point. She's gonna make sure that I that I'm staying on point with everything that I do. Um. Like, she never lets me drop the ball, and she's very smart, and she's on point, so, and she keeps me on point, so, um, I got mad love for her, for sure, for sure. Man, I got love for her, too, because she brought you in here to talk to us, so, you feel me? That's what's up, man. So, I think, I definitely want to thank all, everybody that came in today, you feel me? Y'all chopped it up with us, y'all made it definitely a great show. I love coming in and talking to y'all artists, man. Y'all be coming and doing y'all thing, bringing these great songs, man. So we're going to go ahead in this episode of Fusion Radio, but we're going to tune back in with y'all next week, man. It's your boy YTS, you feel me? I'm in here with my boy Brian, and we make up Fusion Radio. See y'all later.